Today, I just want to welcome back Dr. Bailey from the University of South Florida for this second part video on the temporal bone. In this video, she's going to overview some of the common pathology of the temporal bone, and it's a nice supplement to the location-based approach to the temporal bone that you've seen in the prior video. If you haven't checked that one out yet, please go back and take a look. Without further ado, we'll begin. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Katie Bailey, and today we're going to discuss the adult temporal bone, a pathology-based approach. So my approach for temporal bone pathology is to start from the outside and work your way in to the deepest part and think about the compartmental disease processes that occur along the way. While you're doing this, don't forget that there can be a vascular anomalies of the temporal bone. So always look for the bony walls of the carotid canals and jugular bulb, as well as the presence of foramen spinoso. When in doubt, especially with adults, consider a differential of infection, inflammation, or neoplasm, and you'll be right about 95% of the time. So let's begin. Starting with the external auditory canal, the most common pathology that you'll see is otitis externa. So you see thickening of the mucosal surface of the external auditory canal. And you can see that air-filled external auditory canal is narrowed, and it's all very smooth mucosal thickening along the bony surface. This person happens to also have fluid in the mastoid air cells and fluid in the middle ear cavity. So this would be basically an otitis externa with and otomastoiditis. And to compare it to the normal side, you see a nice air-filled external auditory canal, very thin mucosa along the surface, and you can see just a very thin tympanic membrane on the left side. When you're looking for malignant otitis externa, you're looking for any kind of bone erosion or evasion. So you will see this soft tissue density material in the external auditory canal. And then you can see destruction of the bony wall of the floor of the external auditory canal, including little pieces of bone that have been chipped off by the destructive process. Here it is on the axial, soft tissue with pieces of bone, and you can see erosion into it. Now, malignant otitis externa can invade into the bottom part of the EAC. It can invade into the roof of the EAC and even go into the middle ear cavity. You can have abscesses in the soft tissues around the external auditory canal. You can have it invade intracranially through the sigmoid plate and get a sigmoid sinus thrombosis or a brain abscess. So malignant just means invasive. On the same vent, here's a neoplasm of the external auditory canal. The same idea, you see all this abnormal soft tissue within the EAC. Then you see this subtle erosion of the cortical surface of the external auditory canal. And if you look on this coronal view, you can actually see a defect within the temporal bone at the level of the external auditory canal where this destructive process has invaded into the middle cranial fossa. When you see this, it could either be infection or neoplasm. In this case, it ended up being an adenocarcinoma of the ceruminous or wax glands. Garden variety otitis media is just fluid within the middle ear cavity. You see the ossicles are intact, the sputum is intact, and there's just low density material in the middle ear cavity. It can be really in the mesotympanum, or a lot of times it's just in the hypotympanum. You usually will not see it in the epitympanum without seeing it in the other segments because of gravity. There's no reason why it would be up here and not falling down here. So when you see an otitis media, you want to make sure it's not something invasive or aggressive. So you want to make sure the ossicles are intact, and you want to make sure that tegment tympani, or the roof of the tympanic cavity, is intact. Here it is on the axial views. You have multiple opacified mastoid air cells with fluid levels in the mastoid air cells. So putting this together, mastoiditis, otitis media, gives you an otomastoiditis. In Prusak's space, which is that space we learned about in the anatomy lecture between the sputum and the ossicles, you have abnormal soft tissue density material, you have absence of the sputum, including blunting of that bone, and you have erosion of the ossicles in this location. This is a classic appearance and location of an acquired or secondary cholesteatoma. So here you have all this abnormal soft tissue, you even have a little defect in the tegmentympany, that roof of the middle ear cavity. 
And on the axial view, you have all this soft tissue. You have erosion of part of the ossicles. You have bony erosion. This is an aggressive acquired or secondary cholesteatoma. To look for ossicular disruption, look for that ice cream cone on the axial view. Here you can see that complex temporal bone fracture literally pointing to the ossicles and you have widening of that malleo joint. So the ice cream could slip off the cone. Here's the normal side for comparison. You have the ice cream, you have the cone, and there's very little space in between them. Here you can see a clear lucent line in the malleo joint. And here it is on the coronal. You see that complex fracture pointing straight towards it and that little bit of distance between the malleo joint. So this is a very subtle sign of ossicular disruption, which you should look for with any kind of temporal trauma. One of the vascular anomalies to not miss is an aberrant course of the internal carotid artery. In this case, you have foramen lacerum with bony covering medially, and you see no bony covering of foramen lacerum laterally. So you have that internal carotid artery pooching into the space where the middle ear cavity is. In comparison, you have the normal side on the right. You see a nice bony covering around all of foramen lacerum. Here it is again. You see a nice bony covering all around that carotid. On the left side, you lose that covering. And you have a defect in the wall. And on the coronal view, you can see that internal carotid artery pooching into the middle ear, whereas it should have a nice bony covering. So this is an aberrant course of the internal carotid artery. A dehiscent jugular bulb is another pathology of the vascularity to keep an eye out for. The jugular bulb should also have a bony covering separating it from the middle ear cavity. Here you can see there's just low density material. You do not see a bony covering. On the coronal, you can see that lack of bony covering where the jugular bulb is connecting to the air in the middle ear cavity. And here it is on a soft tissue window. No bony covering of that jugular bulb. This is a dehiscent jugular bulb. Aglomus tympanicum is a vascular tumor of the middle ear cavity. The space you look for this, we talked about in anatomy, is the cochlear promontory. So where that cochlea juts out to the middle ear cavity, a soft tissue mass along that cochlear promontory is a classic location for aglomus tympanicum. So any soft tissue along there, especially if it has like a little polypoid appearance and smoothly marginated along the cochlear promontory, always think glomus tympanicum. Pathology of the inner ear structures, you can get something called labyrinthitis ossificans, which is related to a previous bout of meningitis. You get sclerosis of the cochlea or semicircular canals. So instead of that symmetric diameter of the basal turn of the cochlea, you can see it's sclerotic and narrowed. This can happen to the cochlea, this can happen to the semicircular canals. So here, instead of a nice horizontal semicircular canal, you see it's very thin and sclerotic. So this is the appearance of labyrinthitis ossificans. You can get dehiscence of the semicircular canals, most commonly the superior. So you see no bony covering of this superior semicircular canal. There should be any type of cortical bone over that and you just see here's the semicircular canal and then no bony covering separating it from the middle ear cavity. Here's the same thing on the left side. You see no bony roof of the superior semicircular canal. So this is superior semicircular canal dehiscence. I've seen this in the lateral superior semi, sorry, the lateral semicircular canal as well, but I've only seen that once. You see superior semicircular canal dehiscence relatively frequently. Otosclerosis, you're looking at the fistula antifenestrum, which is that cortical bone between the cochlea and the semicircular canals. It should be nice, bright cortical bone. Here you can see focal areas of lucency within the bone between the cochlea and the semicircular canals. This is a classic location and appearance of otosclerosis. You can also have a pericochlear variant where you get these same little areas of lucency around the cochlea away from the fistula antifenestrum, but this is the most common location and most common appearance. You can see some subtle lucency here, fistula antifenestrum, and on the coronal view, you see these areas where it should be bright cortical bone and instead it's more lucent spongy bone. 
The facial nerve, you'd like to see bony covering of the facial nerve canal throughout its course. So this is a facial hemangioma. So it's a spiculated low density lesion at the site of the geniculate ganglion, which is just above that cochlea. And you can see it jutting into the middle cranial fossa. This is a classic appearance and location of a facial hemangioma. The other facial nerve pathology you can see on a CT is a facial schwannoma. When these are big enough, you will see expansion and remodeling of the facial nerve canal. So here's the stylomastoid foramen, which is widened, and then you see very much widened facial nerve canal as it's ascending. So widening of the facial nerve canal. And then here's that geniculate ganglion, which is very expanded with soft tissue density. So this is a big facial nerve schwannoma. So I want to say thanks to Dr. Bailey for this great overview of temporal bone pathology and a structured approach to the temporal bone. If you haven't checked out the first video on the overview of the temporal bone CT, uh, please go back and check that out. Uh, be sure to like the uh, videos on the channel and hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, hopefully we will have more great content for you soon. Thanks.